We're talking relationships tonight here on Talking Lifestyle. We'd love your company on Open Line 13 12 83. As Flannery O'Connor once said, a good man is hard to find. What did May West say? No, we won't say that. Although, when you finally meet one, recovering from a first date misstep can actually be more difficult. Our next guest is an online dating expert. And when it comes to dating sites, she's tried them all. Nicole Goodman from Dating Upside Down joins us to give us a refresher course on what not to do on a first date and how to put your best foot forward. Uh, Good evening, Nicole. Hi, hi. Hi there, Nicole. It's Melissa here. Hello, Melissa. Hello, David. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you're more than welcome. Welcome. Yeah. So you seem like the right person to ask a question like, tell us about yeah. some of some of the not-so-great first dates you've been on. Not-so-great first dates. Yeah. I think um, <laughs> it's, it's probably, oh, look, some of the, the not-so-great first dates are probably the ones where you walk in and, you know, you kind of know instantly it's, uh, within within the first few the first few seconds, you realise that this person really probably isn't for you, and that could be, you know, a multitude of reasons. It could be that there's a significant height differential, which has certainly happened to me. Um, it could be that their, um, you know, their interest level is completely different to what you what yours is. Um, you, you might just be on, on on completely the wrong page or, or different pages. Um, Okay, Nicole. So, so you've walked in and you've you've summed that up on the date fairly quickly because I know mm. that can happen. Mm. And you sit down. So, how do you approach it? How do you approach a date when you know that mm. that's not the person for you? I think it's all about attitude. And and I've kind of put together five kind of key things to do on a first date that will get you through. Uh, that particular scenario. So not all is lost if you turn up and they're not the right person for you. I think it's about going in with positivity. So I think one of the first things you need to do is just be is be positive about the date, relax, and, and just know that it's not the end of the world if this person is or isn't the right one for you. Um, and also to look at it as an opportunity. So this person may not end up being the love of your life. He may not be your husband or your wife. But it could be this person is a great contact for work or become a good friend. And, you know, these people may have friends that may have more in common with you or maybe a better match. So there's so much opportunity, even if they're not the right, seemingly the right person up front. So because online dating can be such hard work, I imagine what you're saying there is grab the opportunity to turn it into something positive that you can use later for yourself and, you know, possibly even for the other person. It might There might be something that will come out good f- w- with it for them as well. Oh, so absolutely. I really love that. Absolutely. And I think if I look back on my dating history and it's been a while, um, that's probably the one thing I didn't do when I was younger. So for younger players... Um, Think of it more as an opportunity. Be broad-minded about what you're doing and don't only go in thinking of the end goal because sometimes the end goal may not be achieved then and there, um, but through that person, something amazing could happen. Fantastic. What's your third tip? (laughs) My third tip. So, okay. Um, My third tip is have questions in mind to ask the other person if you need to keep the conversation going. If there's dead air or, or um, you know, things just aren't, the conversation isn't flowing, have some key things in mind to talk about, like ask the person about their background, where are they from, um, where's their family from, um, what are their likes and dislikes, maybe um, talk about current affairs, so we've got the US election, huge topic of conversation, so I would say definitely bring something like that up. Um, If you've done something recently that's interesting, talk about that. If you've been away, if you've seen a great play, uh, a great movie, things like that. Beautiful. That um, sounds great. Yeah. And so, so Nicole, and I know you've got a few more tips, but I, mm. I, I work with people too with um, a lot of online dating and I concentrate a lot on people really centering themselves for a date. How mm. important do you think that is for that? Centering themselves. Centering themselves yeah, right. before the date comes comes up. Like really going into a date rather than just concentrating on does this person like me? How, mm. do, you, how do you centre yourself in mm. thinking, do I like this person? 
like putting the nerves aside, what can you do? Yeah, I think, you know, if you need to have a drink, have a drink. Okay. <laughs> That's the most basic. No, no. But what I would say about that is, yes, have a drink, but don't have more than one. Um, I think it's about having confidence in yourself and just um, knowing that or, or, or feeling confident that you have a lot to offer as a person. And again, it's taking the pressure off. If you can take the pressure off yourself and off the person, I think the date will go a lot more smoothly. Have a conversation with a friend or a family member, you know. Um, so go in, go, go in knowing that you've got a really strong checklist of your own that's, that would bring a lot of value to any relationship and take that kind of confidence in. That's fantastic. Absolutely. Right. It's always just about what, what they want and you trying to match um, you know, some other person's checklist. You're a valuable person as well. You deserve everything that you're after. I mean, obviously, there's compromises to be made, but um, you, you don't have to fall in line with anyone else's expectation. It's it's really a, a two way street, and you're sizing them up as much as they're sizing you up. Wonderful, Nicole. You've got another tip there. I do have another tip. My other tip. Oh well, I did discuss this. Talk, see it as an opportunity. Beautiful. Uh, could be a friend or a contract. I do have another one, which is. Oh, yes, this is, this is. And then I've got another one and then a secret one, a real winner. So this one, um, the number five is be positive. Be positive and dress well. Dress well, not just for your, you know, respect yourself uh, and, and the person that you're going to meet. You don't want to turn up in, you know, shorts and yesterday's T-shirt and really showing no interest. Just put a little bit of effort into it. Um Obviously, given the scenario, if you're going for a run or whatever it is with the person we're running here, but just really put a little bit of effort in. I think, um, I think that's good life advice there too, oh, Nicole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, now I know what yeah. I'm doing wrong. <laughs> and what I'd say as well, actually a couple more things. One is um, have a few places up your sleeve for uh, where to meet. The number of times I've had guys say to me, oh, yeah, no, happy to meet up. Where do you want to go? It's very, very frustrating. Um, both men and women should have a list of places of where to rattle off, perhaps, or to choose from. But as a woman, you want the man really, really to take a bit of charge and go, fantastic, you want to catch up, let's go here, here or here, or make a decision and bang. It just makes things so much easier. It shows um, commitment. It shows decision-making. Uh, yeah, uh, Women love that. Women love that. What about, Nicole, if you're looking for somebody with the same interests as yourself, mm. you pick a date where you both share an interest, like you, know, you want to go fly fishing or do you want to go hang gliding or is it something that you'd pick uh, with that person knowing you're looking for somebody that's interested in what you're doing and their mm. likes as well? Mm. Oh, look, if, if you're on the same page with that, I think that's an excellent idea. The worst thing that can happen is the person says, oh, maybe we'll leave that for the second date. I mean, that's a great idea. If you're passionate about fly fishing, great. I mean, you or know, horse riding or enough. something or like that. Taking riding. motorbikes out to ride through Absolutely. Landilo up in the Blue Mountains or something like that. You don't want to go for a bike ride with me. Oh, fantastic. fantastic. <laughs> but, you know, really, I think that's, that's really great. They it's, are some great tips there, Nicole. I have one more. I have ah, yes, please. A okay. Yep. A winning tip. The winning tip is this. Guys and girls, more poly the guys um when you are about to go on the date or when you're at the venue ask the woman or find out before or ask the man what their favorite drink is and what they would like to drink that night and when they arrive it's there waiting for them oh. that is an absolute winner that the first time someone has done that for me was this year oh. before, and it is just stand out that would melt my heart it is a melting moment, I'm telling you. It's just, it really is a melting Hot tip, hot tip. <laughs> we might get some hot tips from our listeners tonight on Open Line 13 12 83. What do you reckon, Nicole? We'll get a few out there, no doubt. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds great. Yeah, good Sounds on you. great. So many people are turning toward uh, online dating, so there must be many people that did so and found the love of their life or found somebody that yeah. is a good friend these days. We'd like to get your tip 13, 12, 83 about that very first date. Nicole, it's wonderful speaking with you tonight. No worries. Lovely to speak to you as well. Thanks, Nicole. You're giving me a few things throughout my sleeve, so thank you. <laughs> Fantastic. Take care, guys.